Welcome to Jackson County High School on this wintry Monday night. PRTC TV bringing you exciting high school basketball action. We're coming to you live streaming on this Monday, December the 19th, both on our PRTC TV Facebook and YouTube channels. So if you're joining us live on this Monday, December 19th, make sure you share the broadcast with your friends so we can help promote these student athletes. These student athletes tonight are going to be the visiting Oneida Baptist Institute Mountaineers and the Jackson County Generals. Justin Lakes, TJ Isaacs, Mark Solfridge, Hunter Carroll, Brian Murray, all courtside tonight. We're about 15 minutes away from the start of this one between the Generals and the Mountaineers. And Hunter Carroll, we've talked about it before. OBI has always been a, a bit of a misnomer as far as not knowing what type of athletes they're going to have from semester to semester. It's a, a great faith-based organization, a class round outfit over there with uh, Larry and Angie Gritton. And they've got a head coach that is uh, no stranger to Jackson County fans and one that is trying to bring Oneida Baptist Institute basketball back into being a player in the 13th region in the 49th district. Yeah, uh, Coach Madden is a, a very well-known coach, especially for around here. Um, does a lot with, with younger kids as well. He's got kind of an AAU program going up in London as well. Uh, does a lot, kind of try to inspire the youth and kind of get them in the gym and get them an experience like that. And, you know, just kind of always a dangerous to be on the, put OBI on the map because, like I said, you really truly never know what you're going to get, what might be, who you might be. You might face a player once and then you don't see him again. And sometimes that can help, sometimes that can hurt. Um, you know, it's like you and I were talking back before the, the broadcast. When I was in school, we had a, they uh, had a kid who uh, he made a 40-point swing. They beat us by 19 at Oneida. Then we played him about two weeks later. He wasn't with the program anymore, and then we beat him by 20. I believe that would be Mr. DeJour Frazier. Yes, one of the one of the quickest and smoothest guards that I've ever seen play. Could jump out of the gym, too. Yes. I mean, he could take off from the free throw line and dunk it. Yep. Incredible athlete. And, and OBI has had some of those athletes over the years. Uh, even the uh, university president, uh, Larry Gritton, back in the day, I believe he played for OBI back in the mid to late 80s, and he was an incredible shooting guard. I don't know if three-pointers had come into high school at that point or not. It was, if it hadn't, it was about to. But, man, he was hard to guard. You can ask Sonny Gabbard. Mm -hmm. He remembers watching Larry Gritton play. And he's got, I believe, um, uh, Alex Gritton is a seventh grader on this team as well. Always a pleasure. And I tell you, we had a chance to have the district over there at OBI uh, maybe three, four, five years ago. Did you get a chance to go over to that one? Yeah, I, I was there for that one, kind of in the, in the student section, being a, a, a fan. Uh, it's, a, it's a special place yeah. over there. I mean, they uh, got a, uh, really known for their snack bar over there at OBI and, and just uh, hospitality. And I tell you, I have always said, and I still believe this, I believe that OBI is one of the top five toughest places to win in the 13th region. It's not number yeah. one and not no. number two. But there's something about going over there to OBI. It's the acoustics and the atmosphere. Uh, you can go over there, and they can uh, beat your socks off. Yeah, and like I said, too, when you go over there, you really and truly never know what you're going to get. And to me, I think as far as an atmosphere, it's probably one of the best atmosphere. I would say it's probably the best atmosphere in the district just because it's so small, it's which, a, which a lot of people think is probably going to be a downfall. It's very Hoosier-esque. Yes, it's very Hoosier-esque, kind of low lighting. Um, but very an old school type gym. I mean, it's just kind of one of those, you take a step back in time when you, you step into that gym. Well said, well said. Step back in time, what well, feels like sometimes 40 or 50 years. So OBI coming into the game tonight under a brand new head coach, uh, Mitchell Madden, have a win and loss record of three and four on the year. Jackson County coming into the game tonight has a win and loss record of five and three on the year. Jackson County wins over Redbird twice. Uh, Leslie County, Owsley County, Berea, and losses to Williamsburg, Lee County, and Clay County. OBI has wins over Redbird, Middlesboro, and just a couple of nights ago defeated Lee County at Perry County Central in the Big Blue Coaches versus Cancer Classic. They've got losses to Owsley County, Buckhorn, North Laurel, and Somerset Christian School. So. If you want to talk head-to-head, -head, Hunter Carroll, we've got uh, two similar opponents uh, for these, actually three opponents by these two teams, and it could go either way. Jackson County defeated uh, Owsley County by 19 in the PRTC Classic, while 
uh, Owsley County uh, Oneida ba Baptist beat them by 18, so there's very little difference there. Both teams handled Redbird rather easily, but the Lee County game, uh, Jackson County, I believe Watterson had about 45 in that game for Lee County, yeah. and we ended up losing to Lee County by 15 points, 77 yeah. to 62. But they beat Lee by five at Perry County Central. And you got to think that Coach Madden had to have come up with a way to slow down Zach Watterson and, and Combs, or they just had off nights. But the fact that they beat Lee on a neutral floor and we lost to Lee by 15 here, you would give a slight advantage to OBI coming into the game tonight. Yeah, now OBI did get beat by Owsley, correct? I'm sorry. Owsley beat OBI by 18. Yes. Yeah. That that yeah. was that was the 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 one that didn't make any sense in yeah. the equation. Mm -hmm. uh, Owsley beat OBI by 18. We beat Owsley by 19. That's a 37 point swing. And that game was at OBI, correct? That game was at OBI. And and one thing too, and you know every game is every game. You got to play with the hands you're dealt. However, you know we did not have. I don't believe we had senior Jude or Andrew Gabbard. In that game, I know You're we correct. didn't. We didn't. I know we didn't have Jude. We didn't have Jude, and I, I, I think. Andrew, or was that the game Andrew was injured? I think that was the game Andrew got injured, but it was relatively early in the game. Yeah. So, and that's, and it's hard to, you know, you and I would both argue, and anyone that's kind of kept up with this general's basketball team, that Jude's probably your best player, and if he's not your best, he's definitely one of your top three. Mm -hmm. So losing, losing one of your top players, and you know, one of your seasoned veterans who's kind of been here and kind of knows how to calm players down and keep things like that plays a bigger factor than what people expect in a, in a basketball game. So, you know, it's one of those you, you got to look at the scores and you got to respect it. However, just me personally, I don't look too much into the Lee Jackson game just for that reason alone. Well, one thing about it, it you can prognosticate and, and do all the algorithms and numbers all you want, but really all you're trying to do is bring some predictability to a very unpredictable sport. Yep. Because we've seen some very unpredictable things happen over the years. Now, speaking of uh, injuries, of course, Jude Lakes is back with the team. He played against uh, Clay County, and uh, that's going to be a big plus for him. I haven't had a chance to catch up with uh, Shane or Misty as far as uh, Andrew's status, but talking to Shane that night, uh, Andrew's ankle was big as a balloon, and, yeah. I, I, and I noticed he is not out there shooting with the team right now, so he may be a person that we may not be able to see until after the holidays. But Andrew always gives quality minutes, takes yeah. good shots, and, and is a real asset to this team. Yeah, I see Andrew down there with Coach Summers right now. He's in street clothes, still got the walking boot on. I think uh, the last I'd heard from uh, the coaching staff, talking to some of the coaches, is that Andrew was probably wasn't going to be back till after the Berea Christmas tournament. Um, was there was their goal and was their plan? Don't know how he's progressing. You know, sometimes an ankle heals better quicker than what one is expected. I do think uh, talking to Shane that I think maybe Andrew tore some ligaments in his ankle, but you know it was one of those that really didn't need surgery. He just kind of needed some rest for time for it to heal itself. So and, and that's a that's a big hurt to this Jackson County team. And also one thing that kind of hurts as well is that. They really needed Andrew just in there just for these kids to be able to develop and get that flow of playing together. You know, like we said, Andrew wasn't with the team last year. You know, got thrilled to have him back this year. However, it takes time to be able to get that flow and be able to play together and know what someone's going to be do. It's not something that happens overnight. So Jackson County still playing without Andrew Gabbard, but Jude Lake's back from his injury. So good to have the senior point guard on the floor. Speaking of Jude Lakes and as far as the Jackson County Generals on the year, uh, statistically speaking, they are led in scoring by Jude Lakes, averaging 15.7 points per game. Ty Summers right behind him at 15.4 points per game. Then you have a wad of three players all averaging right at eight points per game, Keegan Ward, Carter Cunningham, and Andrew Gabbard. Ty Summers leads the team in three-pointers. He's made 23 on the season, uh, shooting a very respectable 44%, 23 of 52. Carter Cunningham, the leading free throw shooter at 74%, 17 of 23. Uh, Jude Lakes not too far behind him at 25 of 36 for 70%. Carter Cunningham, Keegan Ward leading the team in rebounds at over seven per game. On the Onita side, uh, they have uh, Kanan Tyree, number 23, averaging 22 points per game. Uh, Daniel Atakwado averages 13, and Jacob Rogers averages 10. Skylar Roberts is fourth on the team in scoring at eight points per game. Three-point wise, they are led by Jacob Rogers. He's 16 of 32 for 50 percent. Free throws, Kanan Tyree shoots 65 percent, leads the team 46 of 71. 
They only shoot 59% as a team. And Daniel Atakwado, leading rebounder, averaging right at 10 rebounds per game. And one thing too, Brian, that a lot of people probably remember just that was a short while ago, our great PRTC Classic, Mr. Tyree there did break the school record for most points scored in a game in this gym and PRTC Classic record with 50. So he's a, he's a player to watch for tonight on the generals defensively. You do not want to let him get hot because it can be a long night for you. It's interesting that you brought that up about uh, Kanan Tyree. That was the game they defeated uh, Buck, Buckhorn in that game. Yeah. And I was sitting there thinking, we were talking about the fact that uh, Owsley beat OBI by 18 at OBI. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the swing on that with us beating Owsley by 19 here at home, a 37-point swing. But if you could imagine the OBI Lee County game, you got mm -hmm. Tyree on one side who is more of a, he can be a street baller type yeah. player. And then you've got Watterson and Combs on the Lee County side. Probably an interesting game to watch. Yeah, and it would have been, I'd say there were a lot of threes taken in that game if I was if I was betting just seeing, you know, how Watterson likes to play and, and Tyree as well and things like that. And another thing too, you know, as, as you know, this is a very big district game because I feel like that you probably have three teams that are kind of right there, maybe within 10 points of one another with OBI, Clay and Jackson. And then you have the obvious favorite in the 49th district at number one with North Laurel. So it's one of those two, if you win this game, you feel like you're a little bit safer. There's a little bit of pressure off on you playing, being as a two or the three seed and versus dropping down to the four and yeah. having to probably play North after you beat, if you beat Redbird in the play-in game. Yep, yeah, it would be, if you're the four seed, you're gonna have to get through North Laurel to make it to yep. the 13th region. And that's what OBI, Clay and Jackson are all hoping to avoid to fall in the two or three seed. Head to head, these two teams over the years have met a bunch of times, as you can imagine, playing in the same district. Over the last 25 years, which is as far back as we can track it online, OBI and Jackson County has met 50 times. Jackson County has pretty much dominated the series, winning 42 of those 50. OBI only winning eight. OBI had wins over Jackson County in 1999, 2001, 2005, 2009, 2015, 2018 and twice in 2019 Jackson County has won the last three matchups between these two teams head to head. Merry Christmas to everyone as we are only about six days away from Christmas time. Christmas is coming up this Sunday and we wish you all the best uh, Christmas for you and your family. Uh, the two teams from Jackson County are in holiday tournaments. The girls have already arrived at the Smoky Mountain Classic down in Tennessee. They will play Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I believe it's a game for each day, at least a game for each day. And then after the holiday, they will go to the Berea uh, Holiday Tournament, which is also where the general boys will be uh, the week after Christmas. The boys, after the game tonight, will get a break until next week. Yeah, and uh, got the bracket right here too for the girls. Want to wish them luck. They are in action tomorrow night at 5.30. They'll play the uh, Union Virginia School. Um, and if they win that game, they'll await the winner of Russell County and Warren Central. Or if they lose, they'll be playing the loser as well in that. And then the, some other teams in that tournament to watch is uh, you have Casey County in KY, Nashville Christian School, and then Whitefield Academy. Yeah, that, that is a very interesting tournament because you'll see teams from two or three or four different states. Then you might all of a sudden look up there and there's somebody you're playing that's in your actual region. Yep. Uh, but a lot of teams, a lot of great basketball happening in Gatlinburg this week. And best of luck to the Lady Generals. We've got less than three minutes away from the start of this one. It's going to be the OBI Mountaineers and the Jackson County Generals. We'll step away for a quick break. We'll come back and get starting lineups and get this show on the road. High school basketball is next here on PRTC TV. There's so many great things about life in gig country. And PRTC is proud to be one more. A local internet provider with all the speed and reliability your family needs. Backed by hometown service and support. Whether you need to just check email or power multiple Wi-Fi devices all over your home, we've got the right package for you. Stop by one of our friendly offices, give us a call, or visit us online to learn more. PRTC, your local internet connection. It's coming. It's almost here. And we've never been more ready for the holiday's good cheer. We'll be in touch with loved ones from places far and near. 
with fast internet and Wi-Fi for the best days of the year. PRTC has holiday gifts for you this year. Call anyone, anywhere in the U.S., free on Christmas Day. And watch all premium movie channels free December 23rd through New Year's Eve. Visit PRTC online to learn more. Yes, we're all quite over staying home right now. But we can make it better by streaming the great shows and movies we've been wanting to see. PRTC can help. With fast, reliable internet speeds up to one gig, enhanced by reliable Wi-Fi, Stream all you want, no matter how many gadgets are going at once. And with our new Gigaspire Blast, you'll enjoy the ultimate Wi-Fi experience everywhere in your home. Contact PRTC to sign up or upgrade today. With so many fun holiday moments to share with family and friends, there's no time for slow internet or lagging Wi-Fi. So give your gang what they really want this year. Faster internet and Wi-Fi from PRTC. With speeds like these and no dead zones, you'll be ready to share all the holiday fun. Call or visit PRTC online and upgrade your internet and Wi-Fi for the holidays. The Appalachian Wireless Holiday Sale is going on now. Appalachian Wireless has a holiday sale that will make everyone's holiday merry and bright. From now till the end of the year, visit us in store or reserve online for an unbelievable sale on all the hottest devices. Deals like the iPhone 14 for just $99.99 or the iPhone 12 for just one cent. We know what you want for the holidays because we are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. Today, reliable internet is crucial for everyone to thrive. PRTC gets it. And we want you to know if you are currently enrolled in the Affordable Connectivity Program or Lifeline to help with your PRTC bill. You will lose these important benefits if you sign up for a government-funded cell phone plan. Protect your ACP or Lifeline benefit. Contact PRTC to learn more. So, what are we doing here? Well, just a trim. Maybe kind of a layered look. <laughs> Will you read the sign? How about some real choice? Uh, 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 like the choices you get with IPTV, new from PRTC. Enjoy free HD and new features like on-screen caller ID. Plus, record four programs at once with our HD DVR. PRTC, it's all about you. Welcome back to PRTC TV, streaming live on this Monday, December the 19th on our PRTC TV Facebook page and YouTube channel. If you're joining us live, we appreciate you wherever you are near or far. It is time for high school basketball between the visiting Oneida Baptist Institute Mountaineers and the Jackson County Generals. Let's get your starting lineups first of all for the Oneida Baptist Institute Mountaineers with a record of three and four on the year under new head coach Mitchell Madden. They will start number zero, Jacob Rogers. Number three is Skylar Roberts. Number 20 is Alazar Sila. 23, their leading scorer, Kanan Tyree. And number one leading rebounder and second leading scorer, Daniel Atakwado. First year head coach Mitchell Madden leading the OBI Mountaineers now in his 12th season. Coach Greg Parrott leading the Jackson County Generals. They have a record on the year of five wins and three losses. They will start number zero, Jude Lakes. Number three is Ty Summers. Number 32, Carter Cunningham. Number 42 is Keegan Ward. And number 13, Ashton Clemens. Ashton Clemens getting the start tonight. Jude Lakes leading the scoring 15.7. Ty right behind him at 15.4. Carter Cunningham averaging eight. Keegan Ward also averaging eight for Jackson County. Pivotal game here in the early part of the season in the 49th district. As Hunter was commenting before the game, we've got North Laurel ranked in the top 10 in the state and pretty much the rest of the 49th district trying to compete for the two and three slots so they don't have to face North Laurel to get to the 13th region. Jackson County already with a five point loss at home against Clay County. So this is big. Feed down low to Jude Lakes. The turnaround is off the mark. Rebound out of the hands of Keegan Ward. And Daniel Atakwado gets the board for OBI. Atakwado in the paint. 
Floats it down to number 20. That is a miss from Sela. Jude Lakes with the board for Jackson County. Find Cunningham down low. Good spin move up and can't get it to fall. Ward back up and in. Keegan Ward following the play well. Gets the rebound and the put back 2-0 Jackson County. And I think that's something that you really need to see in the early going, Brian, is with Tyree with the early turnover there. Is what you really need to see the generals dominate the board. Seems like they've got the very a, a clear size advantage with Ward and Cunningham. Really need to see them kind of crashing the offensive glass and having their will. OBI doesn't play Clay County till January the 10th. Here's a three, and it is off the mark from Cunningham. After the turnover from OBI, here comes Tyree in the front court to Atakwado. Tyree can really light things up. With, was it 50 even? 50 even is what I had him with. Against, and, against Buckhorn. Yeah, in the PRTC Classic. School record for this gymnasium as far as we can tell. Bad pass by Atakwado. Cunningham with the interception. Some early turnovers here for OBI. Jude Lakes, nice move down low with the dipsy doo. Yeah, I'd really like to see kind of Jude, Titus, and, and you know, Carter, the, kind of your three veteran players, get, get a good start here in these first few minutes. Here's a quick three from the wing. It's no good. Rebound to Ashton Clemens. Clemens doesn't have numbers, wisely waits for his teammates, but Summers wants the three. That one's way too strong. Ward back up and in. Nice pass there by Titus. That's what we'll call it as. Keegan Ward with a couple of buckets here in the early going, and it's 6-0. Jackson County with 6-19 left here in the first quarter. 30-second timeout called by Coach Mitchell Madden. District games for OBI thus far. They have uh, their one and one on the year thus far in the district, winning by a bunch over Redbird and then losing by a bunch to North Laurel. They won by 56, but then lost by 65. They'll play Clay County at OBI on January the 10th and then turn around on nine days later on the 19th and play them at Clay. Jackson County will get another shot at Clay on the 24th, five days after they play OBI the second time. So Jackson County will have to win by more than five to seed themselves higher than Clay County in district play. And really good start here in the early going for the juniors. Kind of the start you'd really like to draw up if you're Coach Perry, causing several turnovers, really making OBI feel uncomfortable with this kind of token pressure. Skylar Roberts with the floater. It's no good. Rebound tipped, and Jude Lakes ends up with it. Jude into front court. Jude over to Cunningham. He wants a three, and that one's good. Carter Cunningham can really shoot for a post player. First three yep. of the game for the Generals, now 9-0. And one thing in the early going, Brian, that I think the Generals have done a very good job as is this one and done. No offensive rebound that time either, and nice feed from Summers down to Ashton Clemens. He's on the board. Four players for Jackson County have scored. And five and a half minutes left here in the first. OBI yet to score. Here's a good opportunity. That one's short, though, and the rebound to Keegan Ward. I don't Ward think. Ward has really made his presence known so far here in the first half. Summers, difficult shot. Quarter. Can't get it to go, and Cunningham with the rebound and going to draw the foul. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think OBI's had a single offensive rebound down there not, yet. Not yet, no. And like I said, you know, that one and done, that seems like um, going back to the last time we saw the juniors here on this court, that. Uh, Clay kind of had their way on the offensive boards, uh, really dominating the paint and stuff like that. And it seems like that's something that the generals have worked on in practice the last few days, getting ready for this game. You know, it's, it's to my knowledge, there's not been an offensive rebound yet. It's been one and done, and they're getting in a hurry, and they're trying to run it down their throats and score. Jackson County with the early 12-0 lead, make it 13-0 as Carter drains them both. 5-15 <laughs> held OBI scoreless for almost the first three minutes of this one. Takwado over to Roberts. His three is on the way. It's no good. Cunningham, again, nice position for the rebound. And really been impressed, too, with our two posts so far, Ward and Cunningham both. Summers throws it away. Takwado puts it up and in. A little bit of a lazy pass there. Summers trying yeah. to get it to Lakes. First turnover of the game, I believe, for Jackson County. Yep. Jude Lakes, baseline, up and no good. Ward fighting for the rebound, puts it up and in. Keegan Ward having a whale of a first quarter. He leads us with six. Several offensive rebounds as well. 
15 to two, Jackson County off to a great start. Good hands by Jude Lakes to knock it away from behind into the hands of Keegan Ward. Clemens for three, that one's good. Ashton Clemens with five here mm -hmm. in the first quarter and it's 18 to two. And that's something Clemens is not known for either. You know, he's kind of really known at making, making your life hard on the offensive end and he's kind of shooting layups. But I mean, he seems like he's developed a lot of confidence here in the early going and be able to knock down that shot. A great start here for the Generals. Foul was called on Ashton Clemens, his first, team's first. And Roberts will inbound it for Onita Baptist. Approaching the midway point here in the first quarter. Jackson County with a 16 point lead. Roberts in the paint, puts it up, no good, rebound. Jude Lakes, gotta be one of the top five rebounding guards in the region, Jude Lakes does. He just yep. really can get up. Lakes trying to use Ward as a bit of a screen and if that's on a Takwado, he's picked up his second. And it is. And that'll be shots for Jude Lakes. And that's big too with Takwado. I believe you said he was the leading rebounder and the second leading scorer. He's actually averaging 10 rebounds a game and mm -hmm. I believe about 13 points a game. 13.4 to be exact and 9.7 on rebounds. Lake's trying to push that one in the basket a little bit. Jackson County two of three in the early going from the charity stripe, make it three of four and now 19 to two. Tyree gets the 15 footer to won't fall, rebound to Carter Cunningham. Nice Long pass. Ahead to Jude Lakes. Jude in the paint. Ball fake up and in. Five for Jude. 21 to two. And it's been very balanced as well, Brian. You've got Jude with five, Ashton with five, uh, Carter with five, and Keegan with six. Nice move down there by Daniel Atakwado. He's got all four for OBI. 2 2 1, full court by OBI, I haven't got to see it much because that's normally after a made basket. Jude in the corner, down low they go to Ward. Ward puts it off the glass and can't get it to fall. Tyree fell, good no call by the official. Here's Tyree for a three, that one's no good and Lake's up high for another rebound. Outlet to Clemens, over to Cunningham. Cunningham off the glass, no good. Rebound to Roberts for the Mountaineers and knocked away by Clemens from behind. Turnover. Cunningham open for a three. That one's short. Had his own rebound momentarily, but keeps it alive for Summers. Jude Lakes for three. That one's good. Jude Lakes leads the scoring now with eight. 24 to four. Bit of a surprise here at the high school for Jackson County with a 20 point lead. Nice move down there by Kanan Tyree, first points for him. Yeah, and you can tell Ward's kind of like gassed here in this early going, you know, kind of looking for a dead ball so he can get that sub. Loses the handle on it, and it ends up in the hands of Roberts for OBI, turnover Jackson County. Tyree in the corner, that's number zero, Jacob Rogers, can't get the three to fall. Clemens with the rebound, 140 left in the first quarter. Cunningham going to be uh, and that's th his fouled. third. Yeah, and Atakwado has just picked up his third. And we're in the first quarter. Substitutions coming in, number 20 and number 21 for Onita Baptist, Alazar Celia, and then number one, Wyatt Smith. Peyton Singleton and Corey Vickers checking in for the Generals. Ward and Clemens gets a breather. Inbound, nice feed inside, and that's Carter Cunningham. Cunningham's got seven. Was Vickers the inbounder there? I believe he was. Very nice pass there by Vickers, kind of a heads up play. Tyree, Euro step in the paint, Singleton with the rebound. Long pass ahead, Jude Lakes fakes the three. Now he'll drive, put it up and in. 10 for Jude Lakes. Yeah, and the general's really having their way too with this with their 
the OBI's token pressure or just, you know, OBI's kind of done a poor job of getting back here in the early going. Roberts with the one-hand floater. Cunningham with the rebound. Outlet to Summers. Nice pass Speed there by down Summers. Down low to Jude Lakes. A lot of contact. No call. Rebound Carter Cunningham. He's going to be fouled. Going to go against number zero, which is Jacob Rogers, his first, team's fourth, and Cunningham going to get a couple of free throws. Ward does get that breather. Cunningham's free throw is good. Lakes will get a breather. Kind of really like that there by Perry with the kind of giving a minute there with the way you're at right now, kind of a commanding lead in this first quarter, giving your senior point guard just kind of a quick 60-second breather before the quarter. Cunningham a perfect four of four from the line. He's got nine. He's going to get a break as well. So with 53 seconds left here in this first quarter, Jackson County has rolled up 30 points on OBI. They lead 30 to six. Tyree hounded by Clemens, penetrates, kicks it over to Rogers for a three. That one's no good. They do get the offensive rebound this time. Roberts kicks it back out to Rogers and Travel. we've got traveling called on Jacob Rogers. Yeah, first offensive board that the Generals have given up uh, in this first quarter. It took them seven, about seven and a half minutes. It's got to be a plus right there if you're Coach Perry. Generals can hold for the final shot of a very high scoring quarter for them. They lead by 24. Down low though, Vickers has got an easy one off the glass and good. Really nice ball movement there between Summers, Vickers, and, and Clemens. 32 to six. Roberts almost loses it. Throws it in the corner. Number 21 penetrates and trying to get it passed to a teammate, but it's knocked out of bounds. Gonna go off the hand of Clemens, they're saying. So with five seconds left, OBI with another shot at it. Rogers gonna trigger it in at midcourt. Gets it into Tyree. Tyree's gonna have to launch it pretty quickly. And they are not gonna get a shot off. So good defense there by Jackson County to seal off Tyree from getting a three pointer off before the horn. It was all Jackson County in that first quarter at the end of one. Generals 32, Mountaineer six here on PRTC TV. <laughs> This is Santa with Mrs. Claus. Now, who are we saying hello to today? Today, we're saying hello and Merry Christmas to all the PRTC customers. Oh, they're all on the nice list. Ooh, that's good to know. <laughs> I wish we had their internet up at the North Pole. That would be nice. <laughs> we want to wish a very Merry Christmas to everyone there. A bundle from PRTC is your local choice for internet, TV, and phone at a better value. Our internet's faster than ever with consistent, affordable speeds no matter how many devices are online. State-of-the-art TV connections deliver more HD choices, convenient DVR options, and now TV everywhere. And unlimited local calling with new long-distance plans backed by exceptional 24-hour customer service. Make the local choice for a better value. Call or visit PRTC online today. Jackson County leads Oneida Baptist Institute by 26 as we get ready to start this second quarter. It's Jackson County 32 and OBI 6 on PRTC TV. We've got Vickers, Lakes, Clemens, Singleton, and Carter out there for Jackson County. All the starters out there except for Ty, I believe. Here's a three, it's no good from Oneida Baptist Institute. Cunningham with the rebound, looking ahead, trying to get it to Jude and does. Good pump fake down low and puts it up and in. 12 points already for Jude Lakes. That's team high and game high. And Tyree pass sails out of bounds, trying to get it over to Collett. 34 to six. And this just goes to show you how unpredictable this game can be because we anticipated a nail biter and it still may be down low singleton nice job offensive. and gonna say the basket's good no no, they, no offensive they did call offensive okay knowing i don't i didn't think i saw enough contact but i guess the way it come off with singleton lowering his shoulder like he did it kind of is a clear giveaway every time which is probably what the ref called it for 
Steele, Jude Lakes, saw that one coming. Pump fake, up and in. Jude Lakes playing some outstanding basketball here in this first half. 14 for number zero, Tyree. Now Rogers, Jackson can't doing a really good job at sealing off the did it again. The three-point line from Tyree and Roberts and Rogers. Rogers called for traveling. We've got a Takwado going to check in, which is an interesting move by Coach Madden with three with three fouls and bringing bringing him in on defense as well. Yeah. They've got Smith in there, also Collett, a Takwado, Tyree, and Tive down low. Vickers, nobody around him, can't get it to fall though. Rebound tipped out, Clemens with it, pump fake, up and in, and the foul. Nice job by Ashton Clemens, he's got seven. Not afraid to get that rebound and go right back up with it. No, I've been very impressed with him too in the early going. Like I said, he's not really known for his scoring, but he's got seven here early in the second quarter and with a chance to make it to eight. And you know, that's something that the generals can't be complaining about. Free throw does rattle out, a Takwado mm -hmm. with the rebound. And you know, Brian, would you, it would kind of be shocking if you said your second leading scorer hasn't scored and you're up 32 right now. Ty's not scored a bucket so far in this game. That's something. And we got a foul called on Jackson County. Jude thought he had a nice little block there. It's actually going to go against Singleton on the block, his second, team's third. Well, and also, too, as Summers checks in for Clemens and also going to get Ward in there for Singleton. You look at what a difference just a couple of weeks makes. Tyree has two points, and we're midway through the second quarter, and we watched mm -hmm. him drop 50 on Buckhorn. Yeah, and the generals really did their homework, too. You know, they the great thing about the PRTC Classic is when one of your district opponents is in, comes in, you kind of get a free scouting report, and you don't have to go anywhere. Here's a three by number 23, and he's going to get going. Just a matter of when. Tyree nails his first three. He's got five. Before that, Summers missed a wide open layup down low. Cunningham, I think, might have got his shot partially blocked there, and a Takwado comes out of there with it for OBI. This is the type of team, too, the Mountaineers. They can put a lot of points on the board in a hurry. A Takwado's three is way too strong. And one thing, too, and Brian, is that you don't really want to see kind of the generals feel comfortable with the lead that they've got. You want to see them keep attacking and being aggressive. Summers gets his own rebound, can't get it to fall, back up again and can't get it to fall, but he's going to draw a foul on the third attempt and go to the free throw line. Foul's on number 15, Andre Collett, his first, team sixth. Ty Summers, who hasn't scored yet tonight. Second leading scorer on the team, averaging 15.4 points per game. Yeah, I think he was kind of, didn't realize how open he was there on, his, on that layup, seeing the Twakado coming and kind of got the nervous jitters there. His shot has not found its range yet tonight. You can tell it on a couple of his jumpers as well, and that free throw kind of shot on the way going down. The Takwado and Collett come out. and Roberts and Silva checking in. Yep. Second one is no good as well, so really good free throw shooter. Summers misses a pair. Five and a half left here in the first half. Tyree Dipsy doing and can't get it to fall. Jude Lakes rebound and then throws it away. Good interception there by Number three, Skylar Roberts. Roberts with a wild shot. It's no good, but gets his own rebound. And number 23, Tyree. Comes up with it. Dangerous pass, and Vickers going to pick up the foul on that. Is number 21, Wyatt Smith, kind of lobbed it up in the air. Vickers first, team's fourth. Smith going to check out. And looks like Rogers coming back in for Coach Madden's Mountaineers. A little bit of a scoring drought here as the team's kind of at a stalemate here over the last minute, minute and a half. Knocked away by Summers. Good defense by number three. Tie into front court over to Lakes. Lakes 
Picks up his dribble in the corner. Here's a three. That one's going to rattle out from Ward. And the rebound to Tithe for OBI. Here's a three from Rogers, left wide open and nails it. Second three of the game for OBI. We've got a 30-second timeout called by Coach Greg Perry. We'll take one, two, 437 before halftime. Jackson County leading by 26, 38-12 over OBI here on PRTC-TV. Most of us are in touch with the internet in one way or another all day long. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, in touch. PRTC cares about your connection. We know strong, reliable internet with Gigaspire whole home Wi-Fi makes life better. If you need an upgrade or just have a question, get in touch. Call or visit PRTC online today. Teams are dead even through the first three and a half minutes of this second quarter, six apiece, but Jackson County did a tremendous amount of damage there in that first quarter, outscoring OBI 32 to six. Now 38 to 12 here on PRTC TV, and just like that, it changes again. Jude Lakes with his second three of the game. I've got him with 17 here in the first half. I do too. 41 to 12. Here's a three from Tyree, that one's too strong. Rebound to Jude Lakes again. He may be heading for a double-double here in this first half. Summers on the baseline. Tough pass. Nice catch by Cunningham. Can't get it to fall. And we're going to get a foul on OBI on the rebound. Cunningham looked like he took a pretty good shot, but he got up and shook it off. I didn't see the contact. Yeah, I, I, I did see it kind of. They didn't give him any place to land was the problem, and he was kind of fading away. Cunningham took a nasty fall there. I was really kind of worried because it seems like he hit his head. But he seems to be okay, which is good news. Sela picks up his first, team seventh, and Cunningham going to the line to shoot two. That one's rattling out. First free throw miss of the night for Carter. He was four of four from there coming into that shot. He's got nine points here in the first half. Jax can 0 of four from the free throw line here in the second quarter. Cunningham breaks that streak and climbs into double figures with Jude Lakes. 42-12. And they'll need as a team too, Brian, that you, like you said earlier, you don't want to let them hang around just because of how many threes they shoot. And they can be streaky at times, but if they get hot, it can end up being a long night for your opponent. Yeah, this is a team that can put some points on the board and do it rather quickly. But Jackson mm -hmm. County, Coach Parrott's done a real good job as far as shutting off those three-point shots. They've all mm -hmm. been contested pretty much. And the zone seems to be working very well. They missed the three there. They get their own rebound and Tyree in the paint can't get it to fall. They get the rebound again, though. So OBI with the third shot at it. Rogers for three, and that one's good. Second three of the quarter and of the game for Jacob Rogers. He's got six. 42-15, Generals by 27. Three-minute mark here in the second quarter. Lakes for three. That one's no good. Long rebound kicks out to OBI. That's Rogers quickly into front court to Tyree. Back to Rogers, the three is off the mark, but they get the offensive rebound again. A lot of long kick out rebounds yep. off these threes. Roberts for three, that one's off the mark and Jude had the rebound for a moment, but Roberts gets his hands on it. Here's Summers for a three, that one's good. First field goal of the night for Ty Summers. Lead up to 30 now at 45-15. Tyree gets the screen. Jumper from 15 is short. Follows it nicely, though, and had his shot blocked. I'm not sure if they're going to give that to Ward or to Lakes. We would probably prefer Ward, I mean Lakes. I'm sorry, I was thinking of Peyton Singleton, who had already picked up two here in the first half. First one on Ward, and the team's fifth, and that's going to put number 23, Tyree, to the free throw line. First free throws of the game for OBI. First one rattles out. And OBI, too, Brian, like you said earlier in the broadcast, is a team that does not shoot the free throws very well. And that can really be big late in games. They only mm -hmm. shoot 
as a team, 58.9%. Tyree shoots 64.8%. He gets to the line more than anybody else, 46 of 71. Second one is good by Tyree. He's got six. Him and Rogers tie for the team high here in this first half. 45-16. Long pass ahead is too high as Summer's trying to get it over to Markham. And it sells out of bounds. We've got Summers, Lakes, Markham, Singleton, and Carter on the floor for Jackson County. Roberts along with Rogers, Tyree, mm -hmm. Tive. You know what OBI's gonna do right now is they're running a little uh, four out, one in, got one at the at the top of the key free throw line. Really all his job is to kind of set picks and give players like that an advantage to be able to try and get a shot off. Kane and Tyree trying to make something happen. Got bumped a couple of times, he'll go to the free throw line. Fouls going against Carter Cunningham, his first, team sixth. So Tyree, who just left there a moment ago, gets two more. Tyree averages 22 points a game on the season. Of course, we mentioned, as far as we know, he set the Jackson County High School floor record with 50 against Buckhorn in the PRTC Classic. He gets two of three, I mean two of two there. He's three of four in the game on free throws. Eight points for Kane and Tyree. Jude Lakes put it up and can't get it to fall. Rebound by number 32, Brandstetter. Here comes Tyree in the paint. Has it knocked away? Good defense down there. Markham shovel pass to Tyree, back to Markham, puts it up, can't get it to fall. Those are the ones that you just will keep you up at night. Yeah, and you'd really like to see Summers just shoot it. Right there, there's, you know, I like the unselfishness. However, just just shoot the ball right there. You've got an open layup. There's no point to, to try and make the extra pass there. Just go up, get the two, and let's get back on defense. I think that's what Coach Parrott is telling him right now as Ty comes out and Braxton Clemens checks in. Also got number 21, Smith, coming in for OBI, replacing Roberts. All three field goals for OBI here in this second quarter have been three-pointers. Jude Lakes stops and pops. That one's good. And one thing too, Brian, you know, even with the commanding lead like this, one thing you don't want to do is give a team confidence. You don't want to let OBI get hot. You don't want to give them, let them have a bunch of threes or anything like that. And credit to OBI for not quitting and laying down. They very easily could have in that first quarter. Long three from Rogers is off the mark. Singleton up high for the rebound. Down to Clemens up and in. Braxton Clemens gets his first bucket. 49 to 18, 23 seconds left in the first half. Here's another long three, that one's well short. Cunningham comes up with the rebound. Long pass ahead to Jude Lakes, puts it up and gonna draw the foul. Nice show of sportsmanship there from number 23, Kanan Tyree, his first team's eighth. Got Jude looking for his 20th point right here. I'd say he's probably got four or five rebounds to go with it. 49 to 18, 11.9 seconds left in the half. Free throw is rolling in. Connor Cunningham gonna check in for his older brother, Carter Cunning. Carter Cunningham. Looks like baby brother Lakes is gonna check in here if big brother can make the free throw. He can. So Zion going to give, got younger brothers giving older brothers a breather. Yep. Before halftime. And you know, like just enough, nice little extra breather here with 11 seconds, things like that. 51-18. But what you'd really like to see here is a stop. You don't want to give up an easy bucket or an open three. Tyree gets a long three off, but it's short. So a first half that was dominated by the home team. Jackson kind of takes a 33-point lead into the locker room at the half. It's the Generals 51 and the Mountaineers 18. Stay tuned. We've got Hunter at the half coming up next here on PRTC-TV. Not enough power? It's not okay. Weak Wi-Fi? Also not okay. 
These days, your home's got Wi-Fi connected gadgets and devices here, there, everywhere. And they all use more and more Wi-Fi until, luckily, an easy upgrade to PRTC fast, reliable internet with Gigaspire whole home Wi-Fi makes it all okay. Call or visit PRTC online for a great upgrade offer today. As a U.S. veteran, imagine getting the care you need without driving all the way to Lexington. At the virtual living room in McKee, you'll have access to VA doctors who can prescribe medications through an easy-to-use computer set up in a private, comfortable environment inside the Jackson County Public Library. Schedule an appointment through your VA doctor today. Gigabit broadband internet service for the virtual living room is provided by PRTC. Fiber-powered internet from PRTC is fast, crazy fast. Experience crazy fast internet speeds from PRTC with reliable downloads up to one gig. Now you can surf, stream, game, chill with speed to spare. And with our new Gigaspire Blast, you'll enjoy the ultimate Wi-Fi experience everywhere in your home. Accelerate your internet. Contact PRTC to sign up or upgrade your internet today. Located in the Jackson County Regional Industrial Park in Anvil, Kentucky, the Jackson County McKee Industrial Development Authority helps companies and communities win. It is and always will be our mission to recruit new business and industry and support the people in our region. We want the people and industry to stay in Jackson County and here's why. We offer workforce information and training, business planning for new and existing businesses, the fastest broadband in Kentucky, state-of-the-art facilities, and financial assistance and tax incentives. All of this with a rich culture of communities that care. We were just announced as a certified work ready in progress area. What does this mean for Jackson County? It means that we're ready to go to work with a diverse, skilled, and dedicated workforce. We now have a prime 22-acre construction-ready location just off the newly constructed Highway 30 and only 18 miles from I-75. Close enough, yet far enough. We're Kentucky's advanced manufacturing hub. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at PRTC TV. Thank you for joining us for another presentation of high school basketball action tonight. We're at Jackson County High School. It's halftime as they are entertaining the OBI Mountaineers and Jackson County with a big 33 point lead at the half, 51 to 18. Jackson County did most of their damage in that first quarter, outscoring OBI 32 to six. They outscored them 19 to 12 in that second quarter to bring us to our halftime score of 51 to 18. Not a score that any of us anticipated, and we know we've still got 60 minutes of basketball to play, but in OBI's most recent game, uh, they defeated Lee County at the Big Lou Coaches versus Cancer Classic over at Perry County Central, a team that Jax Kane lost to by 15, but Jax Kane also did not have the services of Jude Lakes, and he's been a huge part as he has outscored OBI all by himself here in this first half. Let's get inside the numbers and find out how we got here. It is time for Hunter at the half. Take it away, sir. We'll start with OBI's uh, individual. First, you had number one, Daniel Takodo, with four points and five rebounds. Number zero, Jacob Rogers, with six points. And then OBI was led by number 23, Kanan Tyree, with eight points. And then if you flip over to the general side, you had number 23, Braxton Clemens, with two points. Number 24, Corey Vickers, with two points. Number three, Ty Summers, with three points. You had number 42, Keegan Ward, with six points and six rebounds. And then you had number 13, Ashton Clemens, with seven points. You had Carter Cunningham, who I am going to put on triple-double watch in this already, Brian. He had 10 points, seven rebounds, and six assists in the first half. And Drew Lakes led the Generals with 21 points and six rebounds. So if you go to your team stats, Onita shot three of 14 from two for 21%, compared to the Generals, 14 of 28 for 50%. Jackson County was five of 10 for 50% from the three-point line, compared to Onita's three of 18 for 17 percent. Um, Onita is shooting six of 32 from the floor as a whole for 19 percent. Yikes. Compared to Jackson County's 19 of 38 for 40 percent. The Generals are only eight of 13 for 62 percent from the free throw line compared to OBI's three of four for 75 percent. Onita had three team assists compared to the Generals 11. 
Um, the Generals had 29 team rebounds in that uh, first half, Brian. Nine offensive and 20 defensive compared to OBI, six offensive and uh, 12 defense, which OBI had uh, 18 rebounds. So, and then, uh, overall, 29 to 18 yeah. on the boards. And then the big kicker to me, too, Brian, was the OBI had 11 turnovers compared to Jackson County's four. I thought that was really what stuck out. Seems like in two, every time that there was a turnover, the Generals did capitalize and were looking to score in a hurry. So it really like the ball movement and the unselfishness there in the first half of the Generals. So like we said, it seems like every kid got involved, seen some positive minutes from all the kids on the floor. Jude Leach really is making his uh, presence known in this game. Him and Cunningham both have really been dominating the glass on the defensive end, along with number 42, Keegan Ward. And uh, general shooting the ball very well. Five of ten from the three-point line, 50%. You know, that's something you're going to live with all day. You know, really like good team shoots around around that 33, 35% from the three-point line. So if you can be above that, you're doing wonders and been very impressive. And the generals are 50% from the floor as a whole. So a lot of good things to happen there in that first half. One thing I would like to see is for the generals to come out here in this second half and not give Onita any life. Just really kind of slam the door. Nail it shut, give the gen give Onita no hope, and just come in, dominate the rest of this half, and get ready for the Christmas tournament next week. Well, OBI, Jackson's done a really, really good job at, at shutting off their three-point shooters, which OBI can really light you up from threes. But not only have they shot them poorly, but the Generals have had a hand in the face at almost every turn. The 2-3 zone seems to be working really, really well. I think they've been doing some chasing out of it as well with Tyree. 51-18, your halftime score. Uh, some games going on from around the region. Uh, yesterday, it was Harlan County defeating Fairdale 69-46. Uh, to 46. That's in the King of the Bluegrass Tournament. What about Harlan County going over and in, jumping into the maybe one of the biggest tournaments in Kentucky? Oh, yeah, and the game before that, too, um, you also had a, a team that we saw at the PRTC Classic. Uh, Harlan County played Lyon County the game before, mm -hmm. and I think that was a three-point contest. You know, and it, that had to be an amazing game with those two guards. You had Travis Perry and Trent Noah. Oh, yeah. I mean, those – too. I mean, just probably going at it and duking it out. I think Lyon County ended up winning it by three. Not 100% sure on that, but, I mean, you know it had to be a really good game. Yeah, Lyon County played LaRue on Sunday in that same tournament, beat them 84 to 65, so they should be heading toward a maybe a championship matchup of some kind. As far as other games going on here um, tonight in the 13th region, Barberville is playing at McCreary Central. Leslie County is playing at Clay County. North Laurel played this morning uh, against Winter Haven, Florida at Fort Myers, Florida, and they got beat by, I think, 16 points. And I'm sure Winter Haven is probably one of the top teams in the country. And Harlan County plays against Louisville Mail tonight. Uh, actually, they're playing right now in that King of the Bluegrass tournament. And that is the only games going on involving other teams from the 49th District and the 13th region. We got just over two minutes away from the start of the second half of this, and we'll step away for a quick two-minute break. 51-18, your halftime score. Jackson County in control over OBI here on PRTC-TV. There are lots of small reasons to have home phone service, and one very big one. 911 emergency location. Only a call from your home phone instantly transmits your address to emergency personnel. Cell phones can't. 911, what's your emergency? If trouble comes to your home, seconds count. PRTC Home Phone helps first responders do their job. It's a small price to pay for what you can save. This is TV. This is TV set free. TV everywhere from PRTC TV sets you free to watch what you want, where you want. Catch your favorite networks, including live TV, ready to watch on any web connected device for no extra charge. That's TV set free. Enjoy the extra value of PRTC TV everywhere. Visit prtcnet.org and sign up today. The Appalachian Wireless Holiday Sale is going on now. Appalachian Wireless has a holiday sale that will make everyone's holiday merry and bright. From now till the end of the year, visit us in store or reserve online for an unbelievable sale on all the hottest devices. Deals like the iPhone 14 for just $99.99 or the iPhone 12 for just one cent. We know what you want for the holidays because we are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. There's so many great things about life in gig country, and PRTC is proud to be one more. A local internet provider with all the speed and reliability your family needs. 
backed by hometown service and support. Whether you need to just check email or power multiple Wi-Fi devices all over your home, we've got the right package for you. Stop by one of our friendly offices, give us a call, or visit us online to learn more. ERTC, your local internet connection. Generals will get the ball first as we start the second half of their game between them and the visiting OBI Mountaineers on PRTC TV. Jackson County with a big lead, 51 to 18. Cunningham, bad pass, threw it right at Ward's feet. Turnover, a Takwado in the lane, puts it up and rolls off. Rebound to Ward. Clemens over to Cunningham for a triple, and that one's too strong. Rebound to number 32, Brandstetter for OBI. Jumper is short off the hand of Tyree. Clemens with the rebound. Here comes Summers from the free throw line. Got it. Nice, nice pull up there by Titus. He's got just a really pretty shot. He does, and you know, it takes a lot of body control right there too to be able to stop everything what you're doing, go mm -hmm. straight up and knock that shot down. And, and slow your momentum down in order to focus on the right range yeah. of the shot. And to keep, and to stop kind of from fading to the left like he was, where his body was taking him in his momentum. We do have a running clock as of now, as the Generals lead out to 35. So this second half could go pretty quickly. Rogers to a Takwado. Off the glass and good. Nice move down there by Daniel Atakwado. He's got six. Clemens, bounce pass down to Lakes, hangs in the air, puts it up and in. Nice pass there by Clemens, too. Real heads up, nice IQ. Threaded the needle. Yep. Lakes has got 23 to lead all scorers. 55 to 20. Tyree trying to work around the screen from a Takwado, but can't get free. Rogers with an NBA three, no good. And rebound, nice, nice. tip out from Clemens to Summers. Puts it up and in. Summers, who was quiet in the first half with only three points, has four here in the first two minutes of the third quarter. Give him seven on the night. Step back three from Tyree is well short, and a Takwado can't save it from going out of bounds. It'll go back to the Generals. This game is so lopsided in the favor of Jackson County, you kind of start thinking about these early district games and coaches sometimes not willing to show, I want to show their whole hand in games until the time really, really counts back up and in. Is that Jude Lakes? It was. Jude's got 25. Have you had that thought during this broadcast that, you know, Jackson County's up by like 40 points and you're thinking, is this unusual? Well, it is in a way, but however, at the same time, in a game like this, especially with how much that we all would say that there is a big difference between the one seed and two seed in the district, with a game like this is almost, I would consider a must win for both teams. So kind of all cards are on the table. Nice move down there by number 15, Collett, shot kind of over his head in transition. Clemens for three. That one's too strong. Rebound to a Takwado. 59-22. And one of the things about district games is down to Clemens. Nice feed from Carter Cunningham. Clemens has got nine. But you had mentioned that they're not factoring in, I think, over a 15-point spread or whatever. But it is. It's a it's a 15-point cap. Lakes looked like he had a pretty clean block there. They're going to get him for the foul, though. But so if Jackson County wins this game by 15 or more, then OBI would have to beat Jackson County by that much mm. or more in the second game, correct? Yeah. So you dig yourself a hole, in a sense. Free throw is good. I think that is that Rogers. zero, Jacob Rogers. Yeah, that's Rogers. First free throw of the night for Jacob. He's got seven on the game. Ward checks out, and Singleton checks back in for Coach Parrott. Tyree's checking out for Onita as well. Second free throw, no good, but they get the offensive rebound, and back up and in by the guy who just checked in for him, Mason Lockhart. So OBI with three points on that trip by getting the offensive rebound. 61-25, clock running, and Clemens did not see Cunningham 
heading toward him and threw it where he was. Vickers going to check in for Clemens. And Tyree did not stay down long as he checks back in for Lockhart. 61-25, 36-point lead for the Generals. Running clock here in the third. Here's an open three, and that one is no good. The rebound to Ty Summers off the miss by Collett. Summers in the paint, puts it up, and rolls off. And we're going to have a foul on the rebound against Jackson County. Carter Cunningham picks up his second personal foul, the team's second foul here in the second half. Even thus far here in the third, Jackson County has outscored them by one, or make that three, 10 to seven. Tyree's really ne never been able to get going, only has one three-pointer on the night. Puts it up and in though, nice little shot there by Tyree. He's in double figures now with 10. Cunningham lost the handle on it, now goes to the floor to try to save it, and it's gonna be taken away by OBI. Number 15, Collett, here's a three, is in and out off the hand of Tyree, and Cunningham with the rebound. In the corner to Summers. Summers drives, puts it up, and rolls it in. Summers coming to life here in this third quarter. He's got six of his nine in the third frame. Two-minute mark here in the third quarter, 63-27. Takwado picked up those three fouls in that first quarter. Hasn't fouled since, though. Tyree off the glass. No good. A Takwado, nice rebound. Puts it up, and no good again. And Carter Cunningham with another rebound. Cunningham over to Summers. Down low for Singleton. Nice move down low by nice Singleton. Move. First points of the night for Peyton. 65-27. One thing about the Mountaineers is that they don't have a tremendous amount of size, so they have to rely on their speed and quickness and shooting. And except for a Takwado, there he is being all over the place. He's got eight, but outside of a Takwado, they're kind of a small team, the Mountaineers. Yeah, and Coach Man too, kind of running that three high set with a big at the post, a big on the post and a big on the block, kind of kind of getting there with a turnover. It kind of really spreads the floor out for you, which is very good for a team like the Obanita has to, where you're trying to shoot a lot of threes to stay into the game. Markham checks in for Summers. Smith checking in for Obanita as well. 30 seconds left here in the third. A Takwado through the lane, up and rolls off. Rebound to Singleton. Outlet to Cunningham, ahead to Markham. Markham off the glass, no good. And it's going to go out of bounds off of the Mountaineers back to the Generals. Be our final broadcast for the 2022 calendar year. We'll be back to you right after the first of the year. Down low, they find Cunningham. Somebody's hanging on his arm. He'll go to the free throw line. They haven't stopped the clock yet, so the horn's about to sound. So he shoots his free throws alone. So kind of good. Now let me ask you a question. As it's had been that long, you've mm -hmm. played a little high school basketball. Would you rather have three guys lined up on each mm -hmm. side or four or by yourself? It really just kind of depends on, I guess, maybe the, the situation and the shooter. To me, it never really bothered me either way how it was how we were going to shoot free throws. It was just, you know, shoot them because a lot of times after practice or something, you know, a lot of kids just shoot free throws by themselves anyway. So. There's really no no difference in a situation like that. So in my opinion, it really just kind of depends on the kid and the situation that you're in. Carter does get one of two, end of three. Jax Kenny in charge by 37, 6629 on PRTC TV. It's coming. It's almost here. And we've never been more ready for the holidays good cheer. We'll be in touch with loved ones from places far and near with fast internet and Wi-Fi for the best days of the year. PRTC has holiday gifts for you this year. 
Call anyone, anywhere in the U.S. Free on Christmas Day. And watch all premium movie channels free December 23rd through New Year's Eve. Visit PRTC online to learn more. Yes, we're all quite over staying home right now. But we can make it better by streaming the great shows and movies we've been wanting to see. PRTC can help. With fast, reliable internet speeds up to one gig, enhanced by reliable Wi-Fi. Stream all you want, no matter how many gadgets are going at once. And with our new Gigaspire Blast, you'll enjoy the ultimate Wi-Fi experience everywhere in your home. Contact PRTC to sign up or upgrade today. OBI gets the ball first to open up the fourth quarter. They trail by a bunch to the Jackson County Generals, 66 to 29 here on PRTC TV. Tyree fakes the three. He'll take the baseline jumper, and it's good. Nice form by Tyree. 12 for Kanan Tyree to lead OBI. Jude Lakes, three-pointer from the wing, is in there. That is the third three of the game for Jude. He's got 28. Good to see Jude knocking that shot down, too. That's something he really doesn't do. He really looks to drive, but him knocking down that shot just adds a whole other level to his game. Keegan Ward doing some nice work on the defensive glass. Gets that rebound off the miss three. Summers, floater is up and short. Rebound tips all the way out to Jude Lakes. His shot is up and in, and the foul. Oh, on the floor. On the floor. Mm. That was close. It was close. He took that big jump step and got fouled on the jump step. Foul's going to go against Tyree. That's his second, only the team's second. Jackson County nice one bound. Pass. They find Ward wide open. Keegan Ward with eight. 71 to 31. 40 point lead for Jackson County. Getting ready to have a whole new lineup in there for the Generals at the next dead ball. You know, at this point, too, you kind of feel comfortable. Six minutes left. It's going to be really hard for Onita to get any kind of momentum here. And one thing you'd like to see on, from Onita's side is a little more sense of urgency. They're not really looking to get any kind of set, any looks. Seems like they're still kind of letting, you know, 30, 60 seconds go off the clock before they even look about running a set. Tyree can't get it to fall, but then Ward throws it away. I think he was trying to get it to Jude Lakes, but Jude was heading the other mm -hmm. direction. Stolen nicely by Clemens. Ahead to Jude Lakes. Jude off the glass and no good. Rebound back up and again no good. But we're going to have a foul as Summers got fouled on the putback attempt. Fouls on Wyatt Smith, his second, team's third, and Summer's going to get a couple of free throws here. Have a chance to climb into double figures if he can make one of two, and he does. Ten points for Summers. And going to get Braxton Clemens, Jamison Markham, Zion Lakes. Singleton. Singleton and Clemens and Markham. Still one waiting to come in for the Summers. Shooters. 72-31. Second one good by Summers as well. He'll check out with 11. And Vickers checking in for him. 73-31. Jackson County in control, leading by 42. Clock is running as you get more than a 30-point lead. Coaches agree they will run the clock and not stop it except for timeouts or injuries. Free three pointer is good. Number zero, Jacob Robert, Jacob Rogers with one from downtown. He's got ten. Comes the second player in double figures for OBI. Generals almost throw it away, but Braxton Clemens runs it down. Down low, they find Singleton. Singleton working hard down low. Blocked by Taquido. Puts it back up. Can't get it to fall a second time. Good defense down there by Daniel Taquido. Ahead to Tyree. Down low for a Taquido. Nice Spin move. Spin move up and rolls in. Ten points for a Taquido. He becomes the third Mountaineer with double figures. And he comes out, and so does Tyree. So. All the starters off the floor for both teams. Braxton Clements for a three. That one's too strong. 
Rebound kicks out to Rogers. I said all the starters were off the floor, but Rogers, the lone starter left in there, I do believe. Long three, no good. Rebound kicks out long to Braxton Clemens. Cross courts over to Markham. Down low for Zion Lakes. Step back 15 footer, no good. Rebound to the Mountaineers. Then stolen by Corey Vickers. Down low, they find Singleton. Singleton off the glass, no good. Jacob Rogers, a long three. That one's off the mark. And Markham with the rebound. Long pass ahead to Braxton Clemens. Puts it up, can't get it to fall. Shot was well short. Corey Vickers pulls off the board for Jackson County. Bounce pass over to Markham. Pump fake up and in. First points of the night for Jameson Markham. Three minute mark. 75 to 36. Ball thrown away. Saved by Vickers. Zion Lakes over to Markham. Markham behind the back. Top of the key. Zion Lakes. Three is good. First points for Zion. And we got a Jackson County foul. Ten players in the scoring column tonight for Jackson County. Foul was on Braxton Clemens, his first team third. And got Connor Cunningham coming in there. Also Austin Bingham. Zion stays in there. Got Lucas Clifton and Jonas Markham checking in as well. Clifton and Jonas Markham. Shot was missed by the Mountaineers. Bingham, cross court pass. Clifton down low. Connor Cunningham loses the handle on it. It's going to go out of bounds back to OBI. Number 12, Landon Bays checking in for OBI. Lakes with the rebound off the miss three. Zion thought about the three. Defense collapsed on him. Down low, they find Connor Cunningham. Can't get it to fall. Gets his own rebound. Puts it back up again. No good. Nice save in there by Clifton. And we're going to have a foul on Connor Cunningham. First on Connor, and the team's fourth. Under a minute now here in the game. Here's a long three from the Mountaineers. Rebound to Connor Cunningham, but he threw it away. Another NBA three. That one's good. And that was Rogers again. He's got four threes, 13 for the game. And Rogers going to check out, and Wyatt Smith going to check in. Mason Lockhart out there as well. Landon Bays and Jonathan Fan. Very, very hard fought win here by the Generals. Kind of a score that no one really saw coming as well. No, I really thought this was going to be tight. Yeah, really proud of the effort too of this kind of this Generals team and really battled back from the adversity they had from the first, you know, coming off that district loss to Clay County. Um, they were able to bounce back and things like that. Keegan Ward right. comes off the bench to save the day. Which allows us to go home a little sooner. He ought to get a point for that. Oh, yeah. At least a block. Can we give him a block? Something. Uh, we're down to 15 seconds now. And Zion Lake's going to dribble the timeout. Jackson County with the big 39-point win improves to 6-3 on the year. OBI will drop to 3-5 on the year. 
The final, Jackson County 78 and OBI 39. We'll come back with final stats, also our PRTC TV player of the game. Stay tuned to PRTC TV. With so many fun holiday moments to share with family and friends, there's no time for slow internet or lagging Wi-Fi. So give your gang what they really want this year. Faster internet and Wi-Fi from PRTC. With speeds like these and no dead zones, you'll be ready to share all the holiday fun. Call or visit PRTC online and upgrade your internet and Wi-Fi for the holidays. The Appalachian Wireless Holiday Sale is going on now. Appalachian Wireless has a holiday sale that will make everyone's holiday merry and bright. From now till the end of the year, visit us in store or reserve online for an unbelievable sale on all the hottest devices. Deals like the iPhone 14 for just $99.99 or the iPhone 12 for just one cent. We know what you want for the holidays because we are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. Today, reliable internet is crucial for everyone to thrive. PRTC gets it. And we want you to know if you are currently enrolled in the Affordable Connectivity Program or Lifeline to help with your PRTC bill. You will lose these important benefits if you sign up for a government-funded cell phone plan. Protect your ACP or Lifeline benefit. Contact PRTC to learn more. So, what are we doing here? Well, just a trim. Maybe kind of a layered look. <clears throat> Will you read the sign? How about some real choice? Uh, 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 like the choices you get with IPTV. New from PRTC. Enjoy free HD and new features like on-screen caller ID. Plus, record four programs at once with our HD DVR. PRTC. It's all about you. <laughs> this is Santa with Mrs. Claus. Now, who are we saying hello to today? Today, we're saying hello and Merry Christmas to all the PRTC customers. Oh, they're all on the nice list. Ooh, that's good to know. <laughs> I wish we had their internet up at the North Pole. That would be nice. <laughs> we want to wish a very Merry Christmas to everyone there. Welcome back to Jackson County High School here on PRTC TV. Jackson County doubles up the OBI Mountaineers literally 78 to 39 to improve to six and three on the year. OBI falls to three and five on the year. And with me, I have a big reason why it went down the way that it did. Our PRTC TV player of the game is Mr. Jude Lakes. Jude, great effort tonight. Anytime you go into a district game, I know sometimes we may overlook uh, Redbird, OBI. It, it could be kind of a thing from year to year, and you don't know what to expect. You know Mitchell Madden, who was a great scorer for the Generals when he played here at Jackson County. They like to get up and down the floor, and they like to shoot threes. You saw what Tyree did to Buckhorn at the PRTC Classic. Uh, I don't think anybody knew what to expect. They beat Lee. Lee beat us. A lot of question marks coming into this game tonight. What was your all's thoughts coming in against OBI here at home? We really didn't know what to expect. Um, we, Lee, they beat Lee five, Lee beat us 15. We all were kind of concerned. But whenever the whenever we started playing, after the first quarter, we all settled in and knew we'd be all right. Everybody in the gym saw Tyree drop 50 against yeah. Buckhorn, probably a school record for this gymnasium. But whatever you all were doing, I really felt like the 2-3, I saw some chasing out of that. but. You know, you rarely saw opportunities where OBI had open looks from beyond the arc, especially Tyree. Was that the mentality going into the game that we cannot let number 23 get loose and do what he did uh, to us, uh, uh, what he did against Buckhorn to us? Yeah, we, we had to let him know that, yeah, he, he scored 50 in here, but it's not going to be like that. We, we weren't going to let that happen. You all got off to a great start. You were really playing your game as far as I like it when you get in the paint and you create. I call you a little bit of a magician with the basketball. And you get in, you elevate. You're one of the better rebounding guards, I think, in the region, certainly top ten among guards in the region easily. But I noticed you've been trying to evolve your game a little bit. You're trying to get a little more comfortable from the three-point line. You seem to like those baselines. And I think we've paid so much attention to the fact that you like to get in the paint and mix it up, but you like the three-pointers as well. 
Yeah, I ha I have to uh, somewhere down the line be comfortable shooting threes, or I'm going to be easy guarded. It's it's getting to that point where I mean teams are just backing off on me, so I have to, I have to some sometime get comfortable with uh, shooting threes. I love the fact that you're trying to make your game multidimensional because you are exactly right. I've seen some of the best shooters in the world, and if that's all they've got they're easily defended and if they don't know if you're going to make the three or beat them on the dribble then they make it much harder to guard talk to you about your 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 injury i'm assuming that was in the williamsburg game yes during the uh, williamsburg game i didn't see you go down i didn't see you come out um was it something that you turned an ankle and didn't really know how severe it was until after the swelling began yeah i, I felt i mean i was hurt after it happened but i got right back up and started playing but uh next morning i definitely felt it yeah. Big old sucker. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, we didn't have you against Lee, so mm -hmm. there was a little bit of an X factor. Yeah. But I really feel like with you and Ty out there running the point, you know, either one of you can be the one or either one can be the two. That dynamic uh, with you and Ty at the top, uh, I feel more comfortable. I, I have to just be honest with you. I feel more comfortable when I see you two guys out there because I feel like you, you feed off each other. Mm -hmm. and, and he may be over there waiting to spot up for a three and you're penetrating and dishing, but you know you and Ty kind of feed off each other in that backcourt. Yes, we do. And uh, all the other guys, they we all have great chemistry and you don't have one without the other. So we've got, we were talking about it off the air and, and, and we might as well address the elephant in the room. Uh, when you start playing OBI and you start playing clay, I mean, North's on a different level than a lot of the teams in the region. Actually, any team in the region, top ten in the state. But this is a game to where we know that we have to be the best of the three between us and clay and OBI to go on to the region. And so this was a big win tonight against a team that, that can that can flat play some ball and, and something good to put in your back pocket as you head into the holiday tournament stuff. Yeah, you can't get stuck at the four or five seed in this region, uh, especially. If you get stuck in four or five, you, it's going to be hard to get to the region. You got to win. Well, you got to got to win two games. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you play out of the four or five, yeah. so great game tonight. We had you with 28 points, quite a few rebounds. Uh, you were the X factor tonight in a really big win over OBI. You guys uh, have the week off, and you go to Berea next week for the Berea Holiday Tournament. Tomorrow. That's some. Oh, it's tomorrow. Yeah, three in a row. Okay, I got you. So you all play in the Berea Holiday Classic this week. The girls play in it next week, yeah. right? So you guys have got Rose Hill Christian, and uh, will you all play uh, three days in a row, 20th, 21st, 22nd? Yeah, I think I think Berea the second day. I'm okay. not sure about after that. So, but is it uh, is that tournament more of a round robin, or do they do uh, do they actually have a championship in that tournament? There, there is a championship, but there's winner side, loser side, and I think there's a championship on both sides of that. Well, get in that winner's bracket and stay in it. Yeah. All right, Jude Lakes, 28 points, great game tonight. Thank you, sir, for coming up and talking to us, and for your difference tonight, you are the PRTC TV player right. of the game. Th hey, thanks to PRTC, you all are the best. Uh, no one like you all, you're the best. Thank you, sir, I appreciate that. Merry Christmas, Jude. Thank you. All right, Jude Lakes had 28 points tonight. He was a, a huge difference maker in this game as uh, Jackson County unexpectedly really wins by a bunch over OBI 78 to 39. And, you know, um, Jude even said it. He said, you know, hey, this is a game when we start playing Owsley, I mean Owsley, OBI and Clay, he said, you know, we're, we're all three in a dog fight for that, for that number two or number three seed. You don't want to be four uh, going into the 49th District Tournament. And that's a lot like we talked about too earlier for the broadcast. And, you know, Coach Parrott knew, Coach Mann, they both knew what, what this game meant. And, um, and it's, you know, it's not saying if you win this game, you're obviously going to the region or anything like that. But your chances increase quite a bit from play, arguably playing the best team in the region in the first round. Versus a team that's probably right around your same level, and you've got another chance to go make it to the district finals in the region. And when we know, when you get to the region, anything can happen. Absolutely, that's why that's why we play the games because there's upsets all the time. All right, let's get our final stats, and then we're gonna wrap this broadcast up. Hunter, tell us how we got to this final score of 78 to 39. Okay, so we'll start with um, OBI as a team. You had number 44, Mason Lockhart, with two points. Number 15, Andre Collett, with two points. Um, number one, Daniel and Tego with 10 points and nine rebounds. Number 32, Tommy Brinster had five rebounds. Um, number 23, Kane Tyree with 12 points. And then OBI was led by number zero, Jacob Rogers with 13 points. 
And then if you flip over to Jackson County side, you had number 23, Braxton Clemens with two points. Number two, Jamison Markham with two points. Number 24, Corey Vickers with two points. Number 33, Peyton Singleton with two points and five rebounds. Number 14, Zion Lakes with three points. Number 42, Keegan Ward with eight points and nine rebounds. You had Titus Summers with 11 points and five rebounds. Um, I missed uh, Brad Ashton Clemens, number 13. He also had nine points and five rebounds. And then you had number 32, Carter Cunningham, with 11 points, 10 rebounds, and seven assists. And then the, the Generals were led by our PRTC player of the game, Jude Lakes, with 28 points and eight rebounds. And then if you go to the team stats, Brian, the Generals were 23 of 49 for 47% from two, compared to OBI's 10 of 27 for 37%. Um, OBI shot 5 of 32 for 16% compared to Jackson County 7 of 15 for 47%. Uh, that, that's on threes. Yes. 7 of what for Jackson County? 7 of 15 for 47% for Jackson. Cool. Um, Jackson County was 11 of 17 for 65% for the free throw line compared to OBI's 4 of 6 for 67%. OBI had 4 assists as a team compared to the general 16. Um, and this is a stat that really stuck out to me, Brian. OBI had 27 team rebounds compared to Jackson County's 51. Wow. Um, and the Generals did had no more rebounds with 35 defensively as OBI did as a whole. The Generals did, however, though, have 11 turnovers in the game versus OBI's 15. And like we talked about earlier, was really impressed with the with the guard play on, going on early forward. Really felt like Jude made his presence known in the first quarter. And there was never a time where I felt like this game was in doubt that the Generals, they led from wire to wire. I mean, started out on that really nice 6-8-0 run, forcing Coach Madden into a timeout. They really kept their foot on the gas, put the nail in the coffin, and never give them needed that chance or give any positive things looking forward to and looking back. Jackson County Generals with a big win as they head into the Bria Holiday Tournament. I thought it was next week. as The girls is next week. The boys is this week. Uh, they play Rose Hill Christian tomorrow at Berea. And then Jude thought they played Berea, the home, the, the host school, on Wednesday, uh, the 21st. And they also have another game on the 22nd, depending on how they do in these particular games. But good luck to the Generals at the Berea Holiday Classic coming up. And good luck to the Lady Generals, too, as they're in the Smoky Mountain Tournament uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, for the next three days. They'll play Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then the girls go to Berea next week after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year. Again, the final score, Jackson County Generals improve to 6-3 and three on the year. OBI falls to 3-5 and five on the year. Generals 78, OBI 39. That's going to do it for us. For TJ, Justin, Mark, Hunter, and Brian, Merry Christmas to you. And thank you so much for joining us for high school basketball action here on PRTC TV.